Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Shrini here. And this is going to be part three in our Selenium Locators Masterclass session. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing to it and hit the bell icon to get notifications of all my upcoming videos. So here you'll be getting a lot of useful videos on automation tools like Selenium, Cypress, Playwright, then with Python, Java, programming languages, right? And also with AI tools, which are so much popular these days. So stay tuned for the same. Let's get started with today's topic. So today we are going to look at the part three in our expert locators masterclass series, and it's going to be completely on to CSS selector. In our last session, we have seen complete tutorial on XPath. So we are going to go one step further in covering the CSS selector. And once CSS selector is completed, I will have one more session, the next one, which will be practically showing you all by writing automation script on how to use these all locators. Okay. So let's get started. So CSS selector is one of the fastest method in locating an element. In fact, it's the fastest way of locating an element. So in order for any automation tester to improve the performance of their automation script, they are always first advised to use CSS selector. After that, let's say CSS selector due to some reason is still complicated. They are unable to find out or there is a lot of matches found. They are not able to get a unique match. Then they advise to go for ID. And then at the end is XPath. The reason being XPath is more complicated in a sense that it has to be found through the HTML where exactly and what all uh, elements throughout the HTML structure are present. It has to get scanned. Okay. Only then it will be able to determine whether this element, the XPath given is present or not inside the current web page. So that is why CSS selector is the fastest way of identifying an element. So this is really, very really important. So let's get started. So let me do one thing. Let me first inspect some element and we will start with the first type of CSS selector that is by identifying an element by ID. But in CSS selector, the way of identifying an element through ID will be different. So let me do one thing. Let me just say I want to identify an element through its ID. Let's say this one, nav link Amazon Prime. Okay. So I'll just write here ampersand symbol, this one, hash symbol, and I'm going to use this one. So we represent ID in CSS selector by this pound symbol, and then we have to give the value of the ID, like how I've given here the value of the ID. So this is how you'll be able to identify this element uniquely. So this is the first type of CSS selector that is identifying an element by its ID. Okay. Likewise, for class, instead of ampers, this hash symbol, we will be using dot operator and we have to go for the class name. So copy this along with the space, whatever value it is present. And you can see that there are 41 matches which are present. So of course, it's an array of elements. So we have to use the indexing approach how I had explained the other day. Maybe I'll show you this way. This doesn't work. Then we need to put a parenthesis outside and we can try the indexing approach. So we'll have to use the expert strategy in order for us to identify. But using this way, we can identify all those classes whichever are matching with this element. So this is the strategy of how to use a CSS selector to form for a class attribute. So for class, we have to use syntax is this way. It is dot class value. And this is the example which we have mentioned. Similarly, this is the example of a ID. So these are the two types of basic types of CSS selector. Third one is called absolute path CSS selector. So it is something like this, that we use this greater than symbol in order to form like parent to child relationship. We try to use this symbol or greater than symbol. So let's say that I want to say that under this div tag, this anchor tag exists. And under this anchor tag, this div tag exists. How would I tell it? So I can say this way, div. Yeah. So let me go a little bit above. Yeah, so div nav shop is there, right? 
So ID is nav extract. So I'm going to copy that. So I can also use like this way as well. Okay. So I can also use the tag name, then the hash symbol, and then the ID. Give a space, give a right, right arrow, right? I mean, greater than arrow, and then try to give one such element, which is the child of this tag. Say, preferably, I go for this anchor tag. And I want to go for its ID. So again, I'll say A hash this one, right? It has been able to reach till here now. Now inside that, I want to go to this span uh, tag, right? So just give a greater than symbol and say span. And you can see that there are two spans present. So I can say span of one, or I can just say span text equal to, right? but it's not able to look it because it needs the way how we used to give our x bar. So that's okay. Uh, if let's say I wanted to access this particular class that I can access here because I can give a dot here and I can try to copy this entire value of class. See, there is no class ID or any attribute available at this particular tag level. But at this particular level we have, so just give a dot operator. So whenever there is a space between a class value. You can see here we have nav hyphen icon space nav hyphen arrow. So whenever there is a space, you have to use a dot operator to use it in continuity. And then see, I'm able to access the element. So this is how we can use the absolute XPath CSS selector, absolute path CSS selector. That is a type we call it. And this is the syntax for it. How do we go about it? It's just like using a parent to child relationship and using a greater than arrow. Now, what is non-absolute path? So rather than using a greater than symbol, you'll use a space. Otherwise, it's the same. So let's say I go back to here. Instead of a greater than symbol, I want to use a space. I can still do that. See, I am still being able to identify the element. So rather than using greater than symbol, you can also use a space. So that is called as a non-absolute path. CSS selector. So I've given the examples so far for both these two types. Then comes the next one as tag name. That is, we can directly go for tag. So let's say I want to refer for this div x nav shop, right? I can just simply say tag name, ID, and the value. Okay. So I can say the another way is just mentioning the tag name. So not just giving the value, just give the tag name, but it will give you multiple matches. So you will have to write a logic of identifying a unique element once you give the tag name. So simpler approach is that you give also the ID and the class like this one, right? This is the ID. And similarly, if I want to go for the class, copy the class value, let's say nav progressive content, right? or nav fill, for example, let's see. So if I go for the class, it is going to give me the matches form. So this is how we would go for the tag name. Okay. The next one is that in CSS selector, we can also go for one tag with attribute and value combination. So what do you mean by attribute and value combination? So let's say that I want to identify some element, let's say best sellers. Director. Yeah, let's say we have this element called best service. Okay. And it is having a class, it is having a text, it is also having a href. Yeah, it is having href, it is having a class. These are the values which are present. So, what I'll do is I'll copy this href attribute value. And I'm going to say here a that is a tag name, then mention attribute value within single apostrophe. So you will have to remove this part that is this double quotes thing. Just keep the single apostrophe. So we are able to identify tag name attribute equal to value. So this is what we meant by 
tag attribute equal to value. In fact, we can give multiple attributes as well. So for that, let me copy nav underscore nav hyphen a value. So for that, I'll say another bracket and then I'll say class equal to in the single apostrophe the value enclosed. Just note the difference between CSS selector and XPath. In XPath as well, we do have this kind of a strategy. Uh, let me show you the difference of that. Let me first paste this example. So in XPath, what we do is we have to put a double forward slash in be before the tag name. And we have to also put at the rate in front of the attribute like this way. So this becomes our XPath, right? But in CSS selector, we should not put at the rate. So we should not put at the rate, neither we should put double forward slash. So this becomes CSS selector. So this is in fact the fastest approach of identifying a locator in a current web page. So XPath is slower compared to CSS selector. So that's why we prefer to use XPath. Okay, so this is the combination of tag name with attribute and value combination. The fifth approach. And we have already discussed how to give for multiple attributes in this above example. So tag name attribute one equal to value and then attribute two equal to value. So I hope this is clear to y'all, right? And the next one is we can use contains also. So like in XPath, what we used to do, we used to have contains, right? So let's say for example, I say here contains text method and then I'm saying sellers. Right. So this is how we used to use contains in XPath. So similarly, in case of CSS selector, we can use contains. So there is a syntax for that. So syntax goes this way. So you have to say star equal to. Okay. But what are you trying to star equal to? You're trying to do it first, the text method. So I'm going to say text star equal to. Put in single apostrophe what you want to match. So let's say I want to match sellers. So you can see here, ID star equal to value. Okay, I've tried to do it for the text method. Let me do one thing. Let me do it for the ID. So ID star equal to X shop, right? So let's try to go for the ID. So just, it's not an anchor tag, I think. Just uh, check it out. What is the value? If I go to its parent, yeah, nav X shop, right? It's a div tag, it's not an anchor tag. So div tag, ID star equal to X shop. So you can see there is a X shop present as a part of the ID. It contains X shop, right? So it is able to give you two matches form. So the parent and the child both are returned. So this is the example of how you will be able to get the value. Or you can basically use the star or the contains attribute. Similarly, we have another thing saying starts with in XPath, right? So similarly for CSS selector, also we have starts with. For that, we have to use this symbol and it will be nav hyphen X shop. So whichever ones are starting with nav hyphen X shop, those will be returned. So this is returned again to elements. So this is how we write it for a starts with. We have to use a symbol and then equal to and then the value and post. Okay, so these are the few methods which we have seen in CSS selector. The next type is ending with a value. So rather than using this symbol for ending, we have to use a dollar symbol. And here, let's say I want to go for container. So I'll remove this one and I'll say container. So it is able to give me six matches form. So it is ending with container. The next one also it's ending with the container likewise so this is the syntax for ending with the value okay now we have got few more things which are left in css selector to be covered so let's cover that so let's say if i want to have a combination of attributes like how we saw in css selector we have rectangular brackets right so likewise we can have multiple attributes also provided so for that we have to use a comma for our operation. So how I will do that? Let me show you. So let's say I copy this class value here and I also copy nav hyphen card the ID value. So this is a dot 
no hero sorry a this one and this is a class a dot So we have to use a comma. I think, yeah. So this is correct now. So what I've done, I'll just let you all know. So this is one X path. See, this is one X path where I've taken the anchor tag dot the class value. And as I mentioned in the class value, whenever there is a space here, you need to replace the space with a dot operator. Then I put a comma here and then I put the other part that is basically, let me do one thing, not this one. So I'll do this. One. Okay. Yeah. So this is one X part or one CSS selector. Then we have to put a comma and then we need to put another CSS selector, which is again anchor tag, then ID nav card. Now this A is optional you can remove a similarly this a is also optional you can remove a so you can see that now i've got only four matches found so this is the way of how you can do or operation between two css selectors you just have to put a comma so this becomes your one css selector you are combining that with your other css selector i hope this is clear so you can pause the recording and see it very carefully how, how i've implemented the or operation Right. Now we have already seen using tag name and ID using this hash symbol. That is the one way of approach of CSS selector. Also, we have seen how to use tag name and a class using the dot operator. Okay. Now there are some more methods of identifying an element through CSS selector that is called, let's say, first drop type. So if you have got a parent child relationship, so let me show you this way. So if I go above, See, nav X shop is there, right? So if I want to go for parent-child relationship, I can go for first of X type. So basically like it is this way. So let's say I'm talking about div, right? Whose ID is equal to nav X shop. So I can say div and then give up this thing. And now I want to find the first of type. Means I want to find out the child tag, but I know the child tag is a part of anchor tag. If you see here, it's an anchor tag. So I can use this way. So I can use this way that this is the parent, give a right hand side arrow, and then the child. Child should be of which type? Anchor tag. So that tag name you need to provide here, colon, first of type. So this is how you'll be able to get the first child return of this entire child element. So this is the example of first of type. It will return the first tag, first child tag. So I'll cover one more and then we will continue the remaining in the next session. So similar to this one, instead of first of type, if I want to cover the last of type or the last child, I can go for last of type. And you can see that in this parent child relationship, it has given me the last anchor tag because I've mentioned the tag name as an anchor tag. So these are the pretty much the major CSS selector which we'll be using in our day-to-day official automation perspective. So I will cover very few more are left. Along with that, I'll also show a practical implementation of how to use all of these things which we have learned in locators inside automation scripting. And also how do we go about organizing our code? I'll be showing that extra bonus thing in my next uh, expat masterclass session. So stay tuned for that and do like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.